Growing up, every day you do the same combinations, the same steps to warm your body up. I've done that for 27 years. It's nice to some days just let that all go and just be a little crazy. So for me to walk in to such a clear, open space and dance there, I felt like I could be whatever I wanted to be. It's like an open sky. I don't think there's another building like this in the city. It's a new idea. It's very bare. You just see the bones. But there's an energy that is going through it. It reminds me that New York City Ballet takes us away from the tradition of classical dance. You have the body, you have the music, and you have the movement. My hope is to strive for a purity of expression through this dance medium, where you're like, strip all the crap away. What still exists is the human form and the beauty of efficiency. And so I think that every facet of this project, this architectural gesture, and the balletic pursuit is striving towards that. You worked for so many years to be perfect and to be in these perfect classical positions. You get to a certain point in your career where you're kind of looking for any opportunity to break out of the box. I'm just interested in trying something different for myself. And it's ended up helping me grow immensely as an artist. There's this idea that we only dance on a stage. Being seen but not being able to be touched. And so to be dancing in a public space was kind of special. Dancing through pedestrians to mesh with everything around us was definitely new territory. New Yorkers have this choreographed movement without even realizing it. Having the grace that ballet has instilled in me, but then moving beyond that and pushing the boundaries that way, for me, that's what I think of when I think of elegant innovation. We're constantly building on the past and putting your little mark on it. I guess that's kind of what every New Yorker is doing. What are you gonna add to it? What do you have to say that's gonna make a difference? <laughs>